word. God's like, you don't tell me who you are. I tell you who you are. Step into who I made you to be. And I'm like, no. And I'm crying, no. You don't tell me who you are. I tell you who you are. Step into who I made you to be. You're not doing it through your own strength, Melody. It's through my strength. And I'm like, but it's dying. Yes, trust me. So what do I do? I fix my eyes on Jesus and what got Jesus through. The joy that was set before him helped him to endure the cross. So when he's dying, he's saying, but this is gonna be the salvation of the world. Many people are gonna be saved. They're gonna be with me in eternity. Thank you, God. I'm gonna keep doing it. It's okay, I'm gonna keep going. He could have said, I don't, I'm done, I don't wanna do this. But the joy that was set before him helped him to endure the cross. Whatever you're facing, the joy that's up ahead, our heavenly kingdom, and all that God can do on this earth will keep you and sustain you and strengthen you. And so I thought about how Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, right? But Stephen, Stephen was one of the first men to die for Jesus. He was stoned. And it says in his word that when he was stoned, he had a vision of Jesus. He saw Jesus. Look what it says. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven. Stephen got to see Jesus. So he's getting stoned and he looks up and what does he see, girls? What does he see? Jesus is standing. Does it say city? No. He's standing. Oh no, you gotta hear this. Don't miss this. He said, and he stood up for Stephen. Said, come on, you're coming home. You're coming home, I'm cheering you on. He stood up. He made Jesus stand up. Mm. And then it says that when Stephen was getting stoned, okay, his last words was, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. What? Don't charge them with this sin and he's getting stoned. Don't charge them with this sin. Something that I've been realizing, girls, that is killing our race is bitterness. Mm. Mm. Here is an example of one that says, don't charge them with this sin. How many of you are saying, charge them with this sin? Mm. Pray they rot in hell. I hate them. Now I gotta go worship. It's mm -hmm. Sunday. As I prayed for you, I kept hearing the Lord say, you need to talk about bitterness. You need to talk about bitterness because it's hindering the race. Yeah. And you know what's so crazy? When you scroll down in Hebrews 12, mm. it says in verse 12, Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. That no roots of what? Bitterness. Bitterness, Bitterness springs up and causes trouble. And by it, many have become defiled. When I looked up this verse and some of the words in Greek, when it says, see to it. See to it. Look diligently. It literally is the meaning of be a bishop. Oversee. Look, look, make sure, make sure. <laughs> we are actually the bishop of our hearts. 
We're actually the one that needs to be like, ooh, ooh, I see bitterness. Uh Uh-uh, I got to uproot it. No, 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 can't let that thing grow. It says, be like, like, ooh, like this is a weed. Like, I I can't, no, 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 I got to deal with this thing right here. It says, it causes trouble. In the Greek, trouble is, it it stalks you. It, it, It bothers you. It bullies you. Bitterness bullies you. It'll keep you up at night. It'll make you want to vomit when you see that person. It controls us. Check out this verse. We construct walls when we are hurt to safeguard our hearts and prevent any future wounds. Isn't that true? We become selective, denying entry to all we fear will hurt us. We filter out anyone we think owes us something. We withhold access until these people have paid their full debts in full. We open our lives only to the people we think are on our side. Mm -hmm. I can have Anthony come back and play softly. So I used to work for a, a endodontist and we used to do root canals, okay? And when we would do root canals, people would come in like, oh, oh, I have the same little tooth. And when you look at the tooth, it looked fine. But it was until the doctor would go in, he would see that this nerve inside of here is what was diseased. So the tooth itself looked fine, but every time cold or hot hit the tooth, they're like, oh, I need to go in, I need to do all my tooth. And they usually didn't come to us until they were like troubled, right? And so we had to go inside the tooth all the way down to the root and get all that diseased nerve out, cleanse it out, fill it back up with this substance that would expand so there's no space, seal it and crown it. And I'm watching this as a dentist assistant going, hmm. Hallelujah. I'm getting a word. I'm like, that's what you do, God? We come in like all this anger out of nowhere. We don't know where it's coming from. And the Holy Spirit got to go in. Uproot all that junk of bitterness. Refill it with his love. His heart seal it with the Holy Spirit and crown you. Amen? Amen. And so, this is not easy. This is not easy. I remember uh, my my spiritual daughter, Maria. Maria, where are you? My lovely daughter, Maria. God brought Maria into our life when she was 24 years old. And although she was 24, There was still a lot of her life that was like if she was 18. Maria was raised in foster care, had 16 homes, never had a family. And the Lord had placed it on my husband and I to be her family. So she calls me mom, she calls CD dad. It's a long, beautiful story. But on like the second year that she was living with us, we said, Maria, you need to, we need to talk about your birth mom. She's like, oh, no, we're not going to talk about that. I was like, oh, yes, we are. (laughs) Because in order for you to run this race, you need to forgive your mom. I'm good. She's good. She's over there. I said, no, no, no. Sweetheart, we got to deal with this. And it was a hard conversation. And then we started to write down every person who hurt her by name. And guys, the list was long. It was so long. And she went out into the backyard and she started to rip up this list with my husband. I think you burned it too, right? And they burned the list. And she said, I release you, I forgive you. I mean, it was like a deep session in our backyard. And I'm watching her and I'm like, yes, Lord, praise the Lord. This is so great. Like, yes, you need to do the same thing. Jesus, like, 
I don't got no bitterness. I don't got no grudges. I think healing, God. I think healing for everybody. <laughs> and the Lord was like, yeah, um, seven years ago, when God called you out of your old church, you haven't talked to your pastor in like seven years. I was like, that's fine. <laughs> He's over there. I'm over here. I don't need to talk to him. God's like, no, I think you do. You guys are about to step into ministry. And I think it would be good for you to call him and honor him for all the good things that he's invested in you. And now I had a, a whole list of why I didn't think that was a good idea. Because of this and this and but this happened, but this happened, but this. He said, yeah, but this, but this, but this happened. Preach it. Mm. And I want you to call him. I'm like, God, I haven't talked to him in seven years. I'm just going, hey, Pastor, what's up? Remember me? <laughs> I'm like, I, God. <laughs> and I hate this because when it's on my heart, I, I got I to gotta get it out. So I confess it to my husband. He's like, baby, you got to do it. I'm like, hold on, slow down. <laughs> Give me a few weeks. He's like, uh-uh, obe obedience, immediate obedience, babe. I'm like, chill out. That's why I didn't tell you nothing. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. God, there's a lot of church hurt. Mm. There's a lot of church hurt, God. And God's like, I want you to call him. And I just want you to say, I honor you. And I thank you for all that you've poured into me. Mm. That's all. And I'm like, oh. but how do I start the conversation? Like, what do we even, how do I start? God's like, just say, I really miss you. I was like, what? <laughs> and I did. I did miss my old pastor. Mm -hmm. But that would mean being humble <laughs> and vulnerable. And I got the courage. And I started asking around for his number to make sure and it was the same. And I called him. And he answered! <laughs> And I'm like, hello? And he's like, hello? I'm like, <laughs> and I just start weeping. He's like, are you okay? Who is this? I'm like, it's Melody. Are you okay, Melody? Like a good pastor would say. Are you okay? Is everything okay? I'm like, yeah, no, no, everything is great. <laughs> Everything is great. I just called to tell you that I miss you. And there was a long pause. And something broke. Something broke. And he just stayed on the phone. And, and I'm literally weeping like this. I miss you. And I just want to honor you. And I want to thank you for all that you poured into me. And I want to thank you for the years that you let me be the youth director. Mm -hmm. I was like one of the only female youth directors in Chicago. <laughs> and because of that, God opened so many doors for me. And I learned a lot of good things from you, Pastor. And I know things didn't end well at our church, but I just want to honor you and thank you. My husband and I are going to be going into the ministry. And I don't want this on my heart. I said, in the name of Jesus, Melody, I bless you. And I bless your ministry. And you will do great. And don't even worry about it. The past is the past, Mama. I would love to have you and your husband over for dinner. I was like, I would love that. I want you to see my daughter. I have a daughter. I, I have a spiritual daughter. I, I, have, I have two ch children. You know, he's like, I, I would love to meet them. W when can we schedule that? And I'm like, what just happened right now? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dinner? What? 
I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> sisters. <laughs> That's why I really love y'all, right? <laughs> like, something broke. Something broke. Bitterness, it cripples us. Yeah. Humility, forgiveness opens us up. Good. We're free. We're free. The Bible says that bitterness, it's, it's um, the Greek word is pikria, which is like sourness that literally makes your face scowl. You know what I'm talking about. And you're scrolling on Facebook and you see their picture. <laughs> and you're like, oh, she got married. That that face? Okay. That? That face right there? (laughs) That's bitterness. That's what bitterness is right there. It literally is an acid to the soul. But you know what's scarier? It says, and from this many have become defiled. You know, I went to Moody Bible Institute. These are people who study the word. I have met so many people who no longer serve Jesus who went to Moody. And a lot of times, it's the root of bitterness. They never dealt with it. And it grew and it bore. Instead of the fruit of the womb, it became the fruit of the wound, okay? Mm-hmm. And people became so wounded that they couldn't run this race well. Jesus desires to heal our wounds, but often we don't let him heal them because it's not the easiest road to take. It's the path of humility and self-denial that leads to healing and spiritual maturity. And so I said, God, okay, so... How do we run this race then? How do we run this race well? What do we got to do? We got to run with endurance. We got to lay aside every sin and encumbrance. We got to look to Jesus, right? And we need to uproot. And you will say, well, how do I know I'm free? Like, when do I know I'm free? Because I think I forgave them, but I don't even know. Like, what's the test to know you're free? Well, If the Lord asks you, you can bless them. That's how you know you're free. If the Lord asks you, you can receive from them. You can't receive from them, there's bitterness. If the Lord asks you, you can honor them when the Lord asks you. You know you're free when you see them and nothing else comes up in your heart. Those are signs that you're free. And so how do you get free? You got to confess and you got to communicate. You got to confess and you got to communicate. Communication kills assumption. Yeah, it's good. Communication kills assumption. And so you got to communicate and you got to confess. Matthew 18 says, when there's an offense, you go to the person who's offended you face to face. And so... I was reading more and I said, okay, God, so we want to keep running this race, right? You can play the soft song. Not the clean song, but the soft instrument on really low. We want to run this race well, right? Okay. And I found a letter that Jesus wrote to his church. And he says to this church in Revelations 2, You have perseverance and you have endured for my name's sake. What a beautiful intro. I want to get a letter from Jesus saying that. You have endured and you have persevered for my name's sake. Yes, but I have this against you. No. There's something against us? He said to the church, I have this against you. You have left your first love. So did they endure? 
Did they persevere? But they what? They left their first love. They mess up. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen and repent and do the deeds you did at first or else I'm coming to you and I will remove your lamp stand, lamp stand out of its place unless you repent. When I read this, I said, God, we don't want to just run the race with endurance. But we want to run with love in our hearts. Because girls, if you don't fall in love with Jesus, this run is a burden. It's not a blessing. But the Bible says that those who love him will obey him and his, his commandments are not burdensome. I remember it was... It's a long story, but my husband and I had a year of friendship. We met in Africa, and we waited the, that whole year becoming friends. My seven-year vow ends. He comes to Chicago and says, I want to pursue you. And I'm going to find a job and move out here. I'm like, okay. And it was like four months he was looking for a job so we could finally begin dating process. And one of my friends was like, hey, I can hook him up with a job at this place. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. And so they hook him up with the job, and they're like, yep, it's almost a done deal. I think he's going to get the job. I'm like, yes. Oh, my God, my baby's coming. And then I get a call. He calls me. He says, no, I, I didn't get the job. I'm like, no. You didn't get the job. What happened? He's like, I don't know. They said the position was filled. I'm like, oh, I've been waiting a year and four months. <laughs> And he's like, don't worry, we're gonna pray. God's gonna do something. So I do some investigating, like, hey, who got the job over there? Turns out it was one of my friend's husbands who knew I was looking for that job. Oh, my man. <laughs> she got it for her man. <laughs> we're both Christian. And she knew how bad. I wanted my man to get that job because that was going to help him move to Chicago. But she gave her husband's name. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> Why you got to take his job, though? Why you got to take his job, though? Why you got to do that? I was so mad. I was so mad. And then it don't help when you got a Christian sister like, ooh! <laughs> that was... because she had two kids and I'm like trying to have understanding she's pregnant I guess she should get the drug you know all this stuff and then prayer and God's like don't don't let that root don't let it root in don't let it uproot it uproot it come on no 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 cut it off and I'm like no no I want to be mad I want to be mad she's not my friend anymore God's like, don't let, don't. And I'm like, please let me mad one day. No, no, no. Don't be mad for one day. I'm serious. It's a weed. It's a weed. You literally got a picture like UPS, right? Coming to your door, right? I have a package for you. Root of bitterness. And you're like, Who's it from? Satan. <laughs> and close the door. Literally, that's what you got. That's how you gotta see it. You gotta see it like. Here you go. Special delivery from the devil himself. Otherwise, <laughs> implant this root, and in a month you'll be hating this person, <laughs> and then soon defiled. <laughs> and I'm like, oi! And God's like, I'm not forgive her right now. Forgive her. And I'm like, <sighs> and you know what forgiveness is? It doesn't mean what they did was right. It doesn't mean they get off the hook. It doesn't mean that it disappears. It means I yield my right to be angry with you. I release my right to be angry with you. And God said, I want you to do that. And you know how they were saving up to uh, buy her 
Uh, she was going to be a nursing mom, a breast pump. Remember how they were saving? Everybody was pitching in for that. All the friends, you know, pitch in for that. Like, I'm like, what? I am pitching in for nothing, Jesus. And Jesus was like, no, no, you're going to give to her. You're going to bless. You're going to bless her. And you're going to hand it to her yourself. So I called her, hey, I'd like to meet with you. She's like, okay. Cause she knew she was wrong. <laughs> we met at Starbucks. She's like, how are you? I'm like, I'm good, how are you? She's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I know that CD wanted that job, but my husband needed that job. And so I put his name and I know he, you know what? And I said, look, it's okay. I forgive you. It hurt me. I cried when I was talking. I was like, it hurt me because you could at least call me. You could have said, Mama, I'm going to put my, my husband's putting his name too. May, may the best man win. Like, talk to me. But it was like a, a, a punch in the throat. Like, what the heck? <laughs> I thought we were on the same team. And she's like, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was like, I forgive you. Cause I don't want this in my heart. You're my friend. She's like, thank you. And I was like, and I wanted to bless you for your your uh, press pump. <laughs> I'm writing this check. And she's like, what? You're gonna give to me? And I was like, yeah. Everybody, they said we were all collecting for you. She's like, and she just starts bawling. What are you feeling? She's like, you're a real Christian. <laughs> you're a real Christian. Wow. I see so many fake people, Melody. Wow. I see so many fake people. I'm so sick of it. I'm like, you're a real Christian. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I wasn't feeling good yet. Like, I was just doing it out of sheer obedience. You know what? A lot of you are like, fix my heart, God, and then I'll do it. Deal with me, hot Lord. Deal with me so I can finally feel like I want to obey. No, baby. Come on. Do it and then you'll feel it later. Come on. Yeah. Your job is obedience. His job is the rest. So good. I did it. I walk out of the Starbucks. I finally did it, God. I did it, God. I can't explain the supernatural. <laughs> I felt like God poured a cup of joy over me that I started laughing and crying. I was like, <laughs> it was so awesome. I can't even explain it. I'm in the car. <laughs> joy we forfeit because we don't want to obey him you know you're free when you can bless your enemy <laughs> you know what's so cool I love this girl so much she ended up being my wedding planner and did an amazing job and we're still very good friends do you know what else God told me to do he said don't tell CD he said cover her Wow. Don't even let her look bad. It wasn't until like maybe a year ago that the Lord said, you could share that testimony with CD now because y'all are good now. And he's like, what? That happened? He's like, I, babe, you know God was going to give me another job. I'm like, oh. But still, you don't know what I went through, right? <laughs> what did you hear? <laughs> okay. So, I end with this. What will drive us to run with endurance? Remember, remember where you used to be. Remember what he used to do. Remember when you first fell in love. Remember how in love you were with the Lord. If you never were in love with the Lord, say, God, then I want to know what that is. Remember where you've fallen. Remember what you, when you first fell in love and look to Jesus. Second, you want to repent. Turn away. Lay aside anything that hinders you. 
You want to return to your first love. The Bible says, do the things you used to do when you first fell in love. I heard a story of a man who was going to go through a divorce. He was done with his wife. And he talked to the divorce lawyer. And the divorce lawyer was kind of sneaky, you know. He liked to, he liked to help clients just mm, stick their, their spouse before the divorce. And he said, listen, you know what would be great? You really want to get your wife? You know, she's hurt you so bad. Pretend you love her for like three months and then serve her her papers. <laughs> Say, did that feel good? Good, because it's over. Just like that. And he's like, yeah. He had so much bitterness and hatred in his heart. And he did it for three months. Loved on her, acted like he used to love her, bought her flowers. Why are you doing this? I love you, honey. I love you. Treated her so well. The three months was up. The lawyer didn't get a call. Then there was four months. They said, hey, what's up? Are we going through with the divorce? What's going on? He said, man, I, I pretended I loved her that I started to love her again. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I started to act like I used to. And I started remembering why I love her. And I heard that story. I said, man, sometimes we've forgotten the warmth of God's love. So why don't you do the things you used to do when you first loved him? Whatever that might be. And lastly, you got to root up. Root up anything, any other bitterness that might be in your heart. Amen? So let's stand. Check out Hebrews 12 in the message. And I'll end with this one. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way. All these veterans cheering us on. It means we better get on with it. Strip down and start running. Never quit. No extra spiritual fat. No parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it. Study Jesus because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in with God. He could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now Jesus is there. He's in the place of honor right alongside God. And when you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again. Item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your soul. In this all-out match against sin, others have suffered far worse than you. To say nothing of what Jesus went through. All that bloodshed. So don't feel sorry for yourselves, ladies. Or have you forgotten how good parents treat children? They discipline their children. So don't sit around on your hands. No more dragging your feet. Clear the path for a long runners so no one will trip and fall so no one will step in a hole and sprain an ankle keep each other help each other and run for it work alongside each other and with God otherwise you'll never get as much of a glimpse of God make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity keep a sharp eye for the weeds of bitter discontent a thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time watch out for the Esau syndrome trading away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy a short term appetite how do we do this ladies we do it through Jesus Hebrews 13 20 says now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his what? Well. His will. Working in us that which is pleasing in his sight 
through who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 There's a song I want to play. It's called Clean. Today, I specifically want to pray as they prepare that song. I want to pray for those girls here who have never really confessed Christ as their Savior. You've never really like said, I want Jesus. I want to place my faith in him and what he did on the cross. I want forgiveness of my sin. I, I've never really made a, a definitive statement I want, I want that. That's you. I want to pray for you. And if you're here today, I also want to pray for the woman who is feeling bitter. Who has a bitter root. Hey, it's okay. God's putting his finger on it. He's putting his finger on it because he wants to deal with it. 